Yeah, the, the balance view training is, um, I think it's the most radical thing that I've ever come across. Just because it is suggesting in some ways the complete opposite to everything else that we've ever learned. And yeah, I, I mean, I learned lots of ideas growing up as we all did and sort of ideas like um, if it was something worthwhile, then it had to be hard work and probably not that enjoyable. Um, I learned also that, um, that there were things wrong with me. You know, different things, different thoughts and feelings and experiences that were just wrong. That I shouldn't be having, or I shouldn't have had, um, I shouldn't be thinking, I shouldn't be feeling. And then when you take just those two together, <laughs> That alone is a, this is a really kind of miserable existence because there's all of these things wrong with me and now I've got to work really hard at finding out what they are, what caused them and how do I get rid of them. And that could, you know, that's a sort of broad spectrum view on it. But, you know, I can look at my life and see in, in, in one way of understanding it, that's what I was doing. I wouldn't have spoken about it like that at the time. Um, but one way that looked for me was the pursuit of happiness and the pursuit of um, like amazing experiences. So that was something that I dedicated a lot of time and energy to. And looking for happiness and looking for amazing experiences in all kinds of ways and places and relationships and activities and, you know, and like all, you know, all kinds. And, you know, we've all done so many different things. And, um, and of course I had those sort of amazing experiences and I had amazingly happy times but they never lasted. So that meant that as soon as that really blissful feeling went or the sense of peace that I discovered sat on my own watching the sunset in the mountains and then when that went away, then the whole game just began again of, well, how do I get back there? How do I get back to that state of happiness or bliss or oneness or just relaxation, you know, feeling completely comfortable? And so it was like a never-ending... Um, struggle really to try and manage my experience you know having these ideas about what it should look like and occasionally it would match up with those ideas um, but the rest of the time it was a struggle to try and recreate certain experiences or um, certain feelings um, certain situations that I thought had made me happy <clears throat> so it was just a struggle and then there were the times when it really wasn't the way I wanted it at all um, so something unpleasant would happen in my life or something unexpected, um, either to do with a relationship or an illness or, you know, something would happen and there would just be these really negative descriptions going on. And, and it just seemed like it, it was just so wrong to think and feel like um, negative thoughts about myself, to feel depressed, to feel meaningless, to feel hopeless or helpless or um, rejected or you know all of these things or feeling guilt about something that I'd done or hadn't done and you know and then, well, what do I do with all of these and you know, and then having all of the strategies to deal with the negative um, data we can just call it all data you know and lots of complicated strategies from running away to just indulging the thoughts of my friends or um, trying to blank them out in various ways or distract myself from them. And again, it, it's just a never-ending game because the thoughts and emotions and sensations are just always changing. Our experience is completely dynamic, absolutely dynamic. You think in the last minute of all the different things you've thought and felt and sensed and experienced, and it's just changing all of the time. So the difficulty in trying to manage and control something that is actually in complete and dynamic, um, a completely dynamic display, it's obvious that that is going to be hard work because it's impossible. It is just the way it is. It's changing all of the time. So trying to latch on to the good ones and trying to hold on to those or recreate them is really hard work. And trying to keep at bay the negative or the unpleasant ones is also really hard work and impossible. But that's what everybody around me was doing. So I, it didn't even occur to me that there could be another way of living life. I had absolutely no idea. Um, and I say that, but at the same time, I knew there must be something more than what I was being told. 
or, or what my current understanding was. Like, like I knew somewhere deep down in me, and you know, and again, I looked in lots of different places for where this sort of missing piece of the puzzle would be, like where this sort of education or this information that I was looking for was. And I went to university and I spoke to people and talked with people and read books and you know looked up things online and um, visited different. I didn't visit many ashrams. I visited a couple, and you know, just just looking for where, like, who can tell me what you know what's really going on here because something doesn't quite add up here. And I never really found it. And then um, just by chance, probably like each of us, like I just found myself coming across some of these talks from Candice. And I wasn't, I didn't really, I kind of, in a way I'd given up the search and I was just like, all right, well, I'm just going to try and be as happy as possible. And then I, I, you know, even though I wasn't that successful, I was quite good at it. But I thought, all right, well, I'll just settle for that. I'll settle for just being as happy as I can as much of the time as possible. And, and I still get irritated and feel like it was all pointless. But guess what? Well, that's just life, isn't it? But then when I came across these talks from Candice, it was like... And I, it was I, someone else was listening to them that I was um, spending time with. So I wasn't even really listening to them. They were just playing these talks. And so I just found myself hearing them in the background. And I would hear Candice, she would just say something, um, something like, I would hear like, all thoughts and emotions um, appear spontaneously and vanish naturally without leaving a trace like the flight path of a bird in the sky. I'd be like, what was that? i have just, right, re can you rewind that bit? Can you rewind? I just want to hear that again. And, and it was like, for the first time in my life, there was somebody who was able to just completely confirm the way that my experience actually was. So it wasn't, it wasn't like I didn't know that or I hadn't recognized it, but there was somebody that was able to state it in really clear, direct, simple, unerring way that I could immediately recognize it was, that's just true, that's, that's just my experience. And then it was so fascinating for me, though, that I just, I wanted to hear more. I wanted to hear more about, um, well, you know, what is going on? How can I understand my experience? How can I make sense of it? How do, how do I be in the world that isn't just this kind of, like, survival? It's just a question of survival, and I'll survive until I die, and then that will be the end of the struggle. It's like, there's got to be more than that. And then listening more and just hearing more and more of these, um, these key points that allowed me to become more and more comfortable with the flow of my own experience. And one of the key points is that just to stop thinking for a moment, notice what remains. There's an alertness, there's a cognizance. The next thought just naturally arises, but there's something that remains, there's something that's constant, and we can call that awareness or open intelligence. And this is the basis of your experience. And so I heard something like that, and it was like, well, okay, wow, that sounds interesting. I did notice something there. You know, there was something that was just aware of everything. And then I was given the suggestion, well, for short moments repeated many times, just stop describing everything, stop focusing on all of the descriptions, all of your thoughts and emotions, you've been doing that for years. Try a different approach of just resting as that awareness. Just resting imperturbably, without the need to seek anything in anything that's appearing. And to repeat that for short moments. And so, oh, great, okay, good. I've been reading all of these books. Like, here's something I can test for myself. Like, this is not to do like, with anybody else's recognition or understanding. Like, I can test this for myself. So I repeated these short moments. And it was incredible to discover that there was this stable ground that was always the basis of each experience, each perception, each data stream. And I discovered this for myself. This was like, wasn't somebody telling me this was the case? I saw it for myself. And I repeated the short moments, and I gained more and more assurance that this was the case. Because every time I stopped focusing in all of the descriptions, good, bad, negative, what was going on, do I like this, do I not like this, all of this stuff that I'd been doing for the most of my life, 
And I just rested as the vast expanse of mind that was the basis of that experience or description, there it was. There was that vast expanse of mind that was completely clear like a sky. And as I began to rest as that, I began to become more comfortable with the flow of my own experience. So rather than all my time and energy going into trying to manage my experience, you know, generate positive ones and get rid of negative ones, that energy was just simply available in a completely open-ended way. Like suddenly I became more open to be in relationship with other people. Like, and I'd really wanted that. I'd, like, I'd had that, that idea, like, I, I, you know, I just want to have open-hearted, easy-going, loving, powerful relationships with people. I'd really like that. You know, maybe it's possible, I'm not quite sure how. And then in this effortless way of not focusing in on my descriptions about other people or about what I thought or felt about them, and instead resting as the openness of perception that was the basis of those thoughts, suddenly that ease and that openness and relating was just naturally available. So this responds to your question about the um, improving or evolving. And for me, it was, um, it was kind of, it, like what I said at the beginning, it was so radical because actually by allowing myself to be as I was, the quality, for example, of openness of relating was something that naturally became more obvious. It was, it was the natural way of relating. That's why I kind of hoped or knew it was possible, but just couldn't quite work out how to do it. I thought I had to think about things more or read more books about how to be open. But the nature of our mind is already completely wide open. It's already wide open. And it allows for all data. So all of your thoughts, emotions and sensations are effortlessly a coming and going. They're streaming through your intelligence without you needing to do anything. So that demonstrates it's already open nature. And so you, when you just rest as that openness, then that is naturally um, displayed in the way that you relate to all of your data, all of your thoughts, emotions, experiences, people, places, things, without anything needing to change or without you needing to be any way other than how you are. And this was the first glimpse of seeing that these qualities in myself that I'd always wanted were already there, they were innate. And it was by allowing myself to be as I was and not focusing in on all of the data that these qualities just naturally became more and more prominent. And that just continues on, it's, it's never ending and it's an inexhaustible opening into beneficial potency. And to discover that all of the things I'd heard about myself, what it means to be me personally and as a human and as part of this society and part of this world, were just ideas that I learned from other people. And to see what is actually true in my own experience simply required me to take responsibility, to rest naturally as the basis of all of those ideas. Then I could see for myself what was true and what wasn't. Then I could see for myself where these ideas had come from, why I'd chosen to adopt them, how they'd limited my life and my relationships, including and perhaps most importantly the relationship with myself. The struggle with myself, oh, the angst. You know, it's, it, it was amazing to discover that there is a way to live life of, it, that's of complete um, joy and ease and benefit and an expression of easygoing love. And that it's just a question of getting used to it. And so everything else that you'll discover in the Balanced View training simply confirms that and confirms your power to make that choice and to live in the way that you know has always been possible that you just never quite knew how. So this is the how-to. And the more I looked into the training, the more I saw that that was the case for me too. Even though it seemed like, wow, that's, is that true? Is it possible? But, you know, they don't know my dark thoughts and my secret emotions. And, but actually, all of those are the power to be of benefit and none of them needed to change. Amazing to discover.